fight continues. Yeah, these hooves again. It's the hooves for me. And overtime. We're all curious. Oh. Alright. <laughs> this is gonna sound weird. I was talking to a friend about the show. He's been a fan of the show since the beginning. And I was like, is it just me? Or is this show's technical world a lot more complex than usual? There's just so many things to keep track of. So I want to ask you guys for a favor. If you wouldn't mind. And this is sort of risking spoilers a little bit. I have no way of really knowing that. So, you know, at your best discretion. Could you, for my sake, <laughs> and maybe the sake of other people reading, outline what we know so far about the, the technical world of the show? There's the curse energy thing. There's the pact thing. There's a whole bunch of stuff that maybe I'm overthinking it, but it feels like it's a lot to keep track of. So I think it would be good to get like a sort of summary of what we know so far, because I want to get it right. I feel like it's going to be really crucial to understand it as best as I can. Oh, I'm having a great time. <laughs> You don't have to explain to him, but alright. Exposition wherever we can get it, I guess. Cut it all. Will it cut? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's telling a lot. But he does a sort of misdirection, right? Sort of like Reagan's rock, scissor, paper gambit. Risking it all in one attack. Oh! Dodge that. Well, that was confident. It's over? It's over? He's leaving? Oh! Damn, he really set that up. The characters are very different, but there's something Tanjiro like about his, his fighting technique. It's like a mix of uh, Night Eye and Tanjiro. Because Tanjiro has the thread where he feels confident in his, in his attack, plus the strategic element, sort of knowing that that boomerang is going to come back around, if you know what I mean. You'd think he'd want to stick around, though, and make sure that he finished the job. But that went a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the time that, you know, I'm setting this up for one attack doesn't go the way they want it to. Unless it comes to the end of the arc, where you're one-punch man. Episode 11, narrow-minded. Not in this show. There's no room for that. And Japan Canal feeling intensifies. Everything. This guy feels like someone who would, you know, he's a thinker. He'll listen. He'll take it all in. <laughs> Closet badass. Oh. So he knows. He's prepared. Interesting that he would say that. Yeah, exactly. He wouldn't expect that at his face. I'm sort of disappointed in his answer. The more that comes out, the, the better and more interesting it is. We're all movie fans. We're all movie fans here. Then a lot of training. <laughs> Expectations, everything. <laughs> Man, some of the, the best friendships are media friendships, you know what I mean? This is a glue right here. Oh, would have expected this level of depth from Earthworm series. I kind of want to watch this movie. <laughs> this guy could do a YouTube channel. Because reasons, the best explanation always passes. This is moving fast. We already got a movie date. And I feel like this is not strategy from Yuji. He just <laughs> wants to go to the movies with this kid. Okay, I was worried it was going to be another annoying teacher. The spring onions. What a thing to say. Yes! This is happening. That is so considerate of mom to ask. <laughs> oh, that's Ghetto. Whoops. I've been calling him Ghetto this whole time. I wonder how long he's had his powers. Seems like he's still discovering them. Went above and, above and beyond for this mission. <laughs> and also, he, he wouldn't. I mean, he has no way of knowing that, but he's not a bad kid yet. Closet badass. <laughs> it's alright. Badasses can cry too. At first I was convinced that there would be lingering effects of that attack I got hit with. Whoops, there it is. Yeah, that's the sense I'm getting as well. 
Okay, that sort of answers it. Yeah, speaking of cockroaches, where there's one, there's more, right? This is a sign that there's a lot more that they didn't know about. It's been brewing underneath the surface. This is always an exciting setup where, not to say that the Jujutsu sorcerers have an easy time of it, you know, their life is hard, they're struggling to fight evil, but it seems like it's sort of been status quo for a bit, at least. It seems like they've enjoyed a, a period of relative predictability to some degree, but it's pretty clear there's a storm brewing, and if they don't nip it in the bud, it's going to outpace them. And Gojo's been set up as sort of their anchor, but I get the distinct sense that Gojo's not going to be enough. It's going to fall on the younger class. Exactly. Exactly. It's happening really quickly. Are they still talking about movies? Oh, it's just... <laughs> it's school days. Mom's got a Misato vibe. Mom had a great time. She seems cool. Hey, what a... A mom after my own heart. Damn, look at this perspective, though. It's refreshing in its rarity. <laughs> I, I'm impressed. I liked it. Even if it's not the whole truth, at least it's, it's thinking. You know, it's different. Alright, it was really grandpa from the beginning. I think that adds something to Yuji's character because I'm not sure if this is right, but at the beginning of the series, he seems sort of distant. Not at all unkind, but kind of detached from other people. His grandfather seemed to be the one person in his life that he kind of relied on. This is just my interpretation, but I get the sense that Yuji's kind of searching in his way for connection. One of the ways this might be most significant to him is not just entering this world, but having the, the people around him that he's meeting. Oh, 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 Yuji's oh, freaking out. Oh, but they're just two kids hanging out, talking about movies. <laughs> his job is at stake. Oh. Yes, let's do this. Yes, let's get this all, all out in the open. That's a really interesting way to look at it. I mean, for all his talk about hatred, I feel like he doesn't want to kill either. This kid's journey is so fascinating. He's sort of on the edge. He's not a bad kid at all. In reference to Yuji just said, without having anything close to the connection to this particular topic, I do know that in a lot of cases, really great internal darkness comes not from one big decision, but from a series of tiny ones that cross key lines. I feel like when I'm evaluating whether or not to make a choice that I sort of have bad feelings about, central in the analysis is my baseline. And my baseline is determined by my pre-existing experiences and decisions and, and patterns of thought I've de developed about that thing. If I take one step in a direction that compromises myself, I've moved my average baseline downward. And so the next step down is a lot easier and so on and so forth. And it happens gradually and maybe even without full recognition until it's gotten to a point where you're kind of shocked at where you are. Not even talking about horrendous actions, just talking about habits, right? There are things that people decide they would rather not do, yet find themselves in extreme excess in that behavior. And it's like, how did it get to that point? Well, it started with one decision, most likely. There are a lot of lines that are hard to uncross, if that makes sense. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Yubi? Is it a Sukuna fi finger? Why all of a sudden? Who did this? Oh man, this is the kid's one tie to a solid, decent world. After the Sadazakura <laughs> High School incident. Oh no! Damn it! I was sort of hoping that this kid would not do this. Oh, that's pretty much curtains on him, right? Feels like a setup for Yuji, no? Yeah, maybe they're trying to spare not just his life, but his soul. Yeah. He needs more time to develop in a lot of ways. Junpei, though. What happens to Junpei? This poor kid. Did he do this? It doesn't make any sense why anyone would curse his mom, though. Wait, this is the bully? The bully is also an honor student? If Miyuki was also a jerk. Oh, that, alright, that <laughs> explains it. <laughs> I was about to be impressed. How does he have time for good grades and bullying? But it's not him, he didn't do the finger. Oh. 
And then a black portal appears in the sky. This whole arrangement is highly suspicious. Mom's death. None of it adds up. I wonder if we have any traitors in our midst. The Jujutsu Sorcerers don't seem like the most cohesive lot, all in all. Stop to look at. Are those cigarette scars? Holy crap. That's why he wears his hair like that. Well, we've gone in a direction. He wasn't. He really wasn't. But it's too late. It doesn't matter what he says. It's gonna feel really good. Like, really good. This is all this pent-up rage. It's been brewing for probably years. This is all happening so fast, this friendship to conflict. Bring him back, Yuji. It's not too late. This is gonna be the line-crossing episode, though, isn't it? Wow, that episode ended fast. Yeah, it seems to be directly what I was thinking. It's the parallel. Gojo, Mahito, and their subordinates, Yuji and Junpei. One thing I was thinking about in the last episode that comes up again, thinking about that conflict between the two pairs, is that the villain's ideology seems to be more defined, or at least we've gotten more exposition on. Life is meaningless, inherently, but you can find it for yourself in something like power or emotion. There's no need to sweat the rules, because you kind of make it up as you go, and so therefore it's a question of strength. You know, if you're strong enough, you can impose whatever you want, and you're okay in doing that. You've earned it, because you have the power to do so, and so power must be cultivated. Come to think of it, there's actually a metaphor in Mahito's power. You know, he can sort of warp his soul to any, any form or direction, sort of like a physical representation of a subjective ideology, you know, you make your own morality, which makes it no surprise that his physical form is monstrous to match his soul form. Yuji has some core tenets, you know, it's using his power to help people. It's making sure that if people die, they die well, or die an honorable death, which contains some respect for their lives, I think. But it seems like the kind of thing that hasn't been fully internalized yet. It seems largely to have been based, at least initially, on his grandfather's request, and sort of a pain of loss, looking for some way to, to cope with that and put his energy somewhere productive. You know, but at least there's structure there. And then Gojo, I think, is the most fascinating, but hasn't really been explored all that much. I have a feeling we got a hint of it in the power ability, you know, the, the infinite. Thinking about it now, maybe there's something to that line about how, given the infinite, you can't move. This is almost definitely going to be an overreading, but it comes to mind. Mihito's ideology, if we're treating it as something that's subjective and can be sort of decided by him without reference to sort of natural law or whatever, or anything more structured, his ideology is formless or infinite in a sense, but can't lead to anything good. If you think that things like morality, good and bad, how one should think or act is open to anyone's interpretation and can be entirely self-generated without any reference to other things that are outside of oneself. That does make the realm of thought and ideology infinite in a sense, but none of it really has any structure. None of it is something that can be built upon in a way that's constructive or has meaning. If meaning is using truth to connect to the world in a way that is satisfying and engaged with life and sort of in harmony with it, then you sort of have to choose. To say that everything can be true if you think it is sort of a sleight of hand, because if everything is true, then also nothing is true. Even though I don't know exactly what what Gojo's all about yet, he obviously stands for something. Life is not meaningless to him. There's a deception in his carefree nature. I don't think he's actually carefree at heart. I think he's carefree about the local and is very, very much concerned with the big picture because he can see it better. His lens is focused differently, but it's focused on something that has more weight, more gravity, is more rooted to the earth than Mahito, who is willing to dispense with the whole thing simply because he can't find anything. Juju Sampo! Oh, okay. What is happening? What is happening? Is it cooking? This is intense cooking. I'm pumped. The tears of the beloved! That was a weird one. That was an episode preview of Jujutsu Stroll. Oh, I'm so lost. I just heard aromas of the heart and I saw fish. Tears of the beloved, the best spice?